What's up, y'all? My name is Beatriz. I'm the water organizer for Texas Campaign for the Environment. And today we're going to talk about basically everything you need to know about desalination in the coastal bed. <clears throat> the information that we chose to include in this orientation challenges the notion that desalination is the best solution to ensure that residents don't run out of water as droughts worsen due to climate change. We believe that stopping new water intensive facilities from being built here, as well as disallowing expansions of existing plants is the best solution as opposed to desalination. There's anywhere between 40 to 80 new projects expected to come to the coastal bend if desalination becomes a reality. Desal would essentially open up the floodgates. It would provide a sanctuary for the culprits of the climate crisis to be able to sit back and accumulate wealth as the world burns. We're definitely against that. So the goal of today's orientation is to get you familiar with some basics. Besides defining desalination, we'll also talk about its expected impact on our power grid, as well as our water rates. We'll introduce the key players trying to make desalination a reality and go over the state and federal permits that are required for these projects and also how far along those permits are. So desalination plants separate salts and other minerals from water through tons of pressure. This visual shows a seawater desalination plant, but brackish groundwater wastewater and agricultural runoff can all be made into potable or drinking water through desalination. The seawater desalination process results in brine, which is a toxic concentrate of salts, chlorine, and copper. If built, desalination plants would dump billions of gallons of this salty brine into our bay every year. This would increase the acidification or salinity of our bay and also harm wildlife. So there's two types of desalination plants. You can separate salts from water through thermal desalination or through reverse osmosis desalination. More than two thirds of desalination plants in the US are brackish water reverse osmosis plants. The types of plants that have been proposed for the coastal bend are reverse osmosis seawater desalination plants. These reverse osmosis plants are very energy intensive because they have to pressurize water through membranes with enough force to separate the salts. So just to give you an idea, in order to treat 660,000 gallons of seawater, the average reverse osmosis desal plant uses enough energy to power 350 homes just for one day. And for further context, the plants that they're trying to build in the coastal bend will produce anywhere between 30 to 50 million gallons per day. Corpus Christi households uh, use an average of 6,000 gallons of water per month. That's a monthly water bill of about $39, and this is according to the rates adopted by City Council in September of this year, of last year, sorry, 2023. It's estimated that the average household's water bill of $39 would increase to about $62 in 2029, and this is when costs for one desalination plant are factored in. In other words, our water bills are expected to almost double due to the cost of just one desal plant. These are the key players trying to make desalination a reality. The Corpus Christi City Council has discussed and evaluated building a total of three desalination plants, two to desalinate seawater and one to desalinate brackish water. Brackish salt water, if I'm not mistaken. The Port of Corpus Christi has proposed to build two seawater desalination plants. Uh, Corpus Christi Polymers has proposed to build the only privately owned and operated seawater desalination plant. Seawater desalination is also a pursuit of the state of Texas. The Texas Water Development Board was created by the Texas legislature in the 50s to manage the state's water needs. 
Each of the state's 16 regions has a planning group. Ours is Region N for the Coastal Bend. 2021, the Coastal Bend Planning Group recommended 64 projects. 64% of the recommended projects were seawater desalination projects. And this is while water conservation projects only made up 13% of the planning group's recommendations. Just to give you an idea of kind of where the state's priorities are for, for these projects. I wanted to point out that Valero and Occidental Chemical or Oxychem have a seat on our planning group. There's also two seats reserved for environmental organizations, one of which is occupied by the Coastal Bend Base Foundation, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more. So you may recognize the name, the Coastal Bend Base Foundation. They host the annual Earth Day Bay Day, a festival meant to celebrate Earth Day that also happens to be heavily sponsored by the worst polluters in the area. The Coastal Bend Base Foundation is a membership-based nonprofit that focuses on the conservation of natural resources. This is according to their website. The Coastal Bend Base Foundation not only relies on the fossil fuel industry for, for sponsorships, they also awarded the world's largest ethylene cracker plants, uh, Gulf Coast Growth Ventures in San Patricio County, a conservation and environmental stewardship award in 2023 last year. Just in case you're not aware, ethane crackers are plants that perform the first step in processing or transforming ethane into plastic products. Gulf Coast Growth Ventures is co-owned by ExxonMobil and SABIC, which stands for Saudi Basic Industries Corporation. The Gulf Coast Growth Ventures plant needs 20 million gallons of water per day. That's as much water as 120,000 residents use in an entire year. To have that little bit of context there. Um, I guess this is all to say that this is a kind of representation we have on the Texas Water Development Board, which is which has resulted in the recommendation for, for desalination for our area. We do have an interactive map that has information on the proposed sites that you see on the screen right now. Feel free to reach out if you want a link to it, uh, but this is what it looks like. So you basically need two types of state water permits to build and operate a desal plant. Uh, one is for the intake of state water and the other is for the discharge of pollutants into state water. So the water intake permit is also called the water use or water rights permit. Uh, the use of surface water in Texas is regulated through a system of water rights. Surface water in Texas is owned by the state and so the state grants the rights to use this water through these water rights permits. The second permit is the water discharge permit or the wastewater uh, permit. It's also known as the Texas Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Permit or TPDES. No longer. The EPA gave Texas the authority to administer the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System or the NPDES program, which is a federal program. This federal regulatory program uh, controls the discharges of pollutants to any body of water in the U.S. So both of these permits have to go through the phases that you see listed here. Not necessarily in this order, and not all permits go through all of these phases. I just want to highlight that um, a contested case hearing, for example, is a phase that not all permits are granted. Essentially, citizens, local governments, and private businesses can actually challenge a permit through a contested case hearing. Requests for these hearings are considered by the TCEQ commissioners. If any of the recommendations or if any of the commissioners grant that hearing, the application would be referred to SOA, which stands for the State Office of Administrative Hearings. There is where a hearing that's very similar to a civil trial will be conducted. And so these uh, administrative judges will issue a ruling that um, eventually goes back to the commissioners. And so the TCEQ commissioners have the last say on whether this permit would be issued or not. 
there's also a federal permit that's required for for building and operating a diesel plant. All all of these plants need a building permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and this is because uh, they are in federal ship channels. All right, so these are the proposals that have been discussed and evaluated by the Corpus Christi City Council. I am going to spend most of the time talking about the Inner Harbor plant, which is the first one listed, uh, and this is because it's the furthest along. So the TCEQ water intake permit for the Inner Harbor desalination plant in Hillcrest was granted on October 5th of 2022. Both the water discharge permit and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers construction permits are still pending. A public meeting for the Hillcrest plant's discharge permit took place on April 18th of this year, 2024. Not sure if you were able to make it out, but more than 100 residents mobilized um, to just show up and basically speak against this permit um, in solidarity with Hillcrest. We marched into the meeting uh, together, holding signs and shouting anti-desal slogans. It was a lot of fun. 80 people gave oral public comments against the Hillcrest plant, while only 22 spoke in favor of it. So that was really cool. Some other things worth noting about this plant. In 2019, it was originally estimated to cost about $220 million. But in January of this year, 2024, city staff reported to city council that the projected cost for this plant would actually surpass $757 million. This is a more than 300% increase, by the way. That figure doesn't include the annual maintenance and operation costs, which were estimated to be about $44 million. So like I said, that's a that's a more than 300% increase from, 20, from 2019 to now, which will continue to increase due to inflation, just based on the conversations that were had with, with council. From what I can tell and what I heard during those meetings is that city council feels that the faster we get this done, the cheaper it will be. But we don't think it should be done in the first place because of the fluctuating price and the fact that it's publicly funded, right? It just seems like a ridiculous thing to do. The reasoning behind doing it as fast as possible is to prevent the price from further inflating. But again, we just don't think that's a good idea in the first place to be seeking such an expensive project um, that is so volatile and that is also publicly funded. Just don't think that's a good idea. Um, so the TCEQ water intake permit for the La Quinta Channel desalination plant in Ingleside was granted on March 28th of this year, 2024. The water discharge permit and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers construction permit are still pending. So the Evangeline project in San Patricio County would involve 17 deep water wells and a brackish saltwater desalination facility. A study on the project was completed last year in 2023. Five locations are being evaluated that would deliver water to an integration point. This brackish saltwater desalination facility would not require a water intake permit since it would draw water from the underground, these wells I just mentioned. It would require a, a discharge permit, but the city is still negotiating the price of this water, uh, which is coming from Sintin. So as soon as they figure that out, they will be applying for, for state permits. It was also noted in some news coverage that there may be additional permits that they need to that they need to get. And this would be permits to bring the water from Sinton to Corpus Christi. So the last one we're going to talk about is the Barney Davis site. So this site near the Barney Davis power plant in Flower Bluff has the longest lead time. And as of August 24th of last year, 2023, it was unclear whether the city council would support it due to just substantial challenges that have come up. The city hasn't applied for any permits for, for this plan. I wanted to point out that it was left out of this slide that was presented to, to council in March of this year, 2024. 
these are the projects that they're focusing on, that they're dedicating staff capacity to. And so we don't see the Barney Davis um, plan plant on there. So to me, that just means that it's just not a priority right now, or maybe uh, it won't be. So these are the board's proposals, the Board of Corpus Christi. The TCEQ water discharge permit for the Harbor Island desalination plant was granted on December 15th of 2022. Both the water intake permit and the US Army Corps of Engineers construction permit are pending. The water intake permit uh, was submitted, but there has been no forward movement since then. Because of a large volume of negative comments, the TCEQ referred the matter to SOA, which we mentioned a little bit ago. Uh, the Port of Ramses Conservancy, which is an organization, and other private parties argued that the permit application should be denied. The second plant that the port has proposed is the La Quinta Channel uh, plant in Ingleside. The water intake permit, the discharge permit, as well as the Army Corps of Engineers permit are all pending. A contested case hearing was completed for the water intake permit, and the SOA administrative law judges ruled in favor of the permit, but a final ruling by the TCEQ commissioners has yet to be issued, so it's still pending. So the now defunct plastics company m and nearly completed the construction of a seawater desalination facility in the Inner Harbor before filing for bankruptcy in 2017. The project was later purchased by the joint venture Corpus Christi Polymers, which owns it now. The TCEQ intake permit and the discharge permit were granted to MNG in 2014 and 2015, but both permits would need to be renewed by the TCEQ for that to continue, for the plans to continue. A public meeting for renewing the discharge permit took place in Corpus Christi in February of last year, 2023. Uh, but as far as we know, the renewal has not been granted. For a little bit more of a uh, of background that, that we, we were able to gather through news coverage, in 2022, Corpus Christi Polymers announced it would restart construction on its plant. But in late September of last year, 2023, the company said it was pausing construction, citing labor shortages and increasing interest rates. Flower, which is an Irving-based engineering and construction company, stated in 2023 that it was ending construction at the Corpus Christi Polymers plant and cutting 66 jobs. Flower's letter said the company was told by Corpus Christi Polymers to terminate its activities by November 10th of last year, 2020. So even though um, it was a done deal for MNG, they went bankrupt and Corpus Christi Polymers, um, even though they had interest in moving forward, it seems like they've come across some, some big issues um, to make this plant a reality. So the, the actual renewal of the permits are pending and the actual construction of this plant is, is very much still pending as well. All right, that's a... That's basically an overview of, of all of the things that we feel are super important for folks to know before we start to integrate you into the work that we're doing uh, for our campaign, which is called Water for People, Not Polluters. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. We really appreciate everybody who has gone out of their way to support not just this campaign, uh, but the notion that desalination isn't the solution that we all want, right? Several people have actually contributed important information to this presentation. So if you have things to contribute, please feel to please feel free to reach out. If, if you are excited about this issue, are passionate about it, and want to um, be incorporated into the work that we're doing to try to stop D-cell, feel free to reach out. And, um, and yeah, I hope to meet you soon.